Researchers at UC Santa Cruz came up with a fun way to optimize how large language models calculate their output and the just significant performance gain on terms of energy consumption. It says it could even run on a light bulb. I mean, probably one of the older incandescent light bulbs, right? Not one of those new fancy LED ones. Oh, okay, so, uh, 13 watts, just 13 watts. Okay, about the equivalent, yep, of, yep, a light bulb, there we go, yep. And the idea is that they eliminated the most computationally expensive part of that, which is matrix multiplications. The dense matrix multiplications are very large matrices that uh, need to rotate and then multiply and then you get an output and then you do it to the next layer and the next layer and the next layer. If they could replace that algorithm instead of multiplying numbers, which is one of the most expensive computational uh, uh, math operations on a CPU, then they could significantly improve the performance and speed of these large language models. So it costs $700,000 per day to run chat GPT 3.5. That's a significant cost for, and that's just the energy part of it. That's not the hardware and all the components that came together. That's just the electrical bill, right? <laughs> $700,000 is very expensive. And if we take a look at this new paper uh, from UC Santa Cruz, it's possible to eliminate the most computationally expensive element of running these large language models, the mul matrix multiplication. And here's what that here's what that looks like. So we're going to take a look at a matrix multiplication. So you've got two matrices here, A and B, and then you multiply them together and you get an output C. And C looks like this, which is basically you, you rotate and you pivot uh, one of the tables. It could be this one or the other one. And then you will multiply together uh, the, the elements and then sum the, uh, the other rows. And so you get a matrix with a, uh, if it's square like this, the output shape is going to stay the same. Uh, if you have a different shape, then the output shape will be different. The expensive part right here is the this this symbol right here, the star symbol. If we could eliminate that star symbol, then we'll have a much more efficient uh, AI model that can operate with much less power consumption requirements. And here's that special technique that those researchers at UC Santa Cruz were using when they improved the performance in terms of energy consumption, the large language model that still had the same quality of output as say Meta's llama model with the same number of parameters using a ternary technique, which allows you to, instead of matrix multiplication, you just check to see what the values are at input time in the ternary is going to be negative one, zero, or positive one. And it's a really simple uh, from a calculation perspective. Uh, now it's even easier because what you've done is you've obviously you're going to want to snap and convert your matrices before you input it into this model and then convert your floating point values into ternary values. That makes a lot of sense. Now you can have a dense matrix that looks like these ones and zeros and a negative one, uh, and then you can multiply those together. And so you'd get these outputs that look like this, negative one, one, two, and negative one, and the resulting matrix looks like this. And so now we don't have to do any sort of matrix multiplication, right? So essentially the idea of multiplying, we're not actually gonna be multiplying in this case, but multiplying one leaves the value unchanged, multiplying by his negative negative one negates the value, right? And then zero nullifies it. Here we go, here's the algorithm. It's the one that we use with the UC Santa Cruz. It's the idea that we can take uh, matrix multiplications instead of actually multiplying, we use a ternary operation with basically if statements, right? If else, and this, this is the function right here. All right, so we're gonna perform ternary matrix multiplication on two matrices without using actual mathematical multiplication and we do this, we have two uh, uh, matrices here, A and B, and then the output result is gonna be uh, the, the, re the result of the ternary operation. So we're not gonna have, <laughs> we're, not, we're not gonna be doing any matrix multiplication. We'll just be using if statements. So we check it out. It's really straightforward. So we loop through, uh, we, we use a transposition approach for looping uh, I and J. So we go through both matrices and all their columns and rows. And then we have an output value, which is gonna be the sum value. Then we want to check to see if the values uh, are gonna be zero in either case, in which, you know, if it's zero, we're gonna nullify the output. Otherwise it's gonna be one or negative one. This is essentially the ternary explanation right here. This is the real ternary part of it. We just check to see if it's gonna be zero. If it's not, then otherwise we're going to return a one or negative one. Then we get add it together and then we did it. So if we have uh, an array that looks like this, one, zero, negative one, one, negative one, 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 zero, 
and then we multiply those together using the not multiplication ternary multiplication method. It allows us to have all of our logic and simple flow control. It's all flow control. So these four loops happen anyway when you're looping over matrix, uh, the matrices. And then you, instead of multiplying the numbers, you just check to see what their output is going to be. And then you return a sum value because the value can equal two on the output, right? Because you can one plus one is going to be two when you're combining these two matrices, right? So it's possible that you'll have a two on the output. Here we go, right? Here's an example output, negative one, one, and then two, let's scroll down here to the bottom, and negative one. And so the output matrix looks like this. So now we've eliminated matrix multiplication. And what's interesting is that they've, uh, the, the researchers at UC Santa Cruz, they say, guess what? They found that it provides the same performance. And you can have the same number of parameters uh, but guess what? We don't really need to do that. I don't know. Would you even need GPUs at that point? Like, this would actually be really interesting to try. I would like to see, I would like to try this firsthand instead of using matrix multiplications, using this approach here. I like this approach here where we, in, we just don't, we don't multiply. We just check to see what the output values are going to be.